Welcome to the Stratcom podcast series. I'm Omar Kablan. I'm a presenter at TRT World. I host a show called Double Check. Today I have a great guest with me, Miklos Gaspar, who's a development communications professional and has over 20 years of experience in making a difference through storytelling, strategic communications and project management. And he's currently heading the digital media and public information materials department at the International Atomic Energy Agency, or IAEA. Miklos, it's great to have you. Let's get straight to it. What do you mean by using storytelling within strategic communications? Can you expand on that a little bit? Sure. Thank you, Amar. Good to be here. So in communication, you want to, your, your message to get through to your audience. So you need to make sure your message is attractive and is you know, comprehensible by them. And very often that can happen when you use the storytelling approach, i.e. rather than give theory, you tell the story of somebody, you know, a village, a person, a country that's been helped through some initiative that you want to communicate about. It is much more effective and adds credibility to your story, to your message, when it's somebody who's been helped, uh, who, would, who would tell the story as opposed to, you know, when you the actor telling it. So that's what storytelling is about. Okay, and when we talk about strategic communications, do you think this is one of the, the greatest tools one can use to communicate effectively? It is one of the tools. You know, it's part of the mix. You always have to select what works best for a particular message, for a particular audience, uh, and in a particular situation. Okay, and can you talk a little bit about your work at the IAEA? Uh, so how do you guys effectively communicate? What are some of the methods you use, your department uses? So the, so the IA, International Atomic Energy Agency, works for the peaceful use of nuclear technology around the world. So our, our work really has, has two pillars. One is to deter uh, nuclear proliferation, so basically the spread of nuclear weapons. And the second one is to, well, to, promote, to encourage the peaceful use of nuclear technology, which can be used you know, from cancer care to plant development and you know, m- many uses around the world. So what we do is to make sure that people understand how nuclear technology is used, what are the many benefits that nuclear has when it's used safely, securely, and reliably, and try to do that in an impact-focused way. So to come back to also to your previous question, we often develop and tell stories of people, communities who have used nuclear technology. So let me give you an example. There There are several countries that do not yet operate any radiotherapy machines. Radiotherapy machine is used in about half of cancer cases for treatment. Uh, So Niger uh, in Africa was a country that only this year started using radiotherapy in a public hospital with support from the IA. So we want to tell the world about this. Uh, We want to tell how, you know, through money we also receive from donors, we've helped the country introduce radiotherapy. And we could tell that story through a patient, through doctors who who, who now have more means, better means uh, to provide treatment. So that's an an example of this approach. When communicating, we always identify first what the message is. So in this case, the message, for instance, would be to tell the world about the importance of radiotherapy for cancer care, who the audience is. So in the example I gave you, perhaps the audience is is actually the general public, really anybody. And then once you have those two, it sort of determines what the medium of communication is. So in this case, the medium would be, you know, reach out to the press, our website, and then also social media. And then we would develop content optimized for each of these three channels uh, in order to increase the impact of this outreach to, to, to get in front of as many people as we can with this message. Okay, so let's just stick on that for a little bit. So one of the main goals is to you know, promote the peaceful use of nuclear technology. Uh, and you say once you figure out who the target audience is, then you can adjust your uh, method of communication accordingly, right? Yes. And... So in this particular instance, can you talk about the use of social media? Is that uh, something your organization uses heavily, relies heavily on? That's right. So we've increased the use of social media uh, over the last few years tremendously by about, you know, tenfold in five years. So we now reach over five million people every month through social media. And that's for us, our primary outreach channel to the general public along with press. So what, what I mean by that is people would come to your website only if they really care about you or if they find you via Google because they're looking for something very specific. Let's say they're looking for a story on the importance of radiotherapy for cancer treatment, and then they would come up on our website. But there are lots of people out there, let's face it, the majority of the world's population, who don't know anything about nuclear techniques, and perhaps at the outset, they don't care that much. The best way to to, to get in front of these people, to inform them, to educate them, is through social media. 
because everybody, I mean, most people uh, use social media. It is through social media that you can, if you do it well, you know, penetrate into their bubbles, get through to them much more so than, than via web- a website these days, which is why. And so, and so this is why social media has become our primary outreach channel. Now, do you think the word nuclear is one of those words that when you when it's being used, people would have a kind of negative image about it or they would kind of refrain from it or they would see it as something bad? Is that one of the challenges you guys face? So, you know, that is perhaps a challenge uh, in, in some quarters. So, you know, but that's what the technology is called. You know, if you name your son Adolf, perhaps that's a negative connotation to some people, but that's still, you know, a bona fide name. So same with nuclear. Indeed, it can be used, you know, for destructive purposes. Um, and yes, many people think of bombs when they hear the word nuclear. There are many other uses. And, and that's what we're here to promote. Absolutely. And so is one of the ways you also promote, so the countries, for example, you talked about radiotherapy. Do you guys provide, you know, statistics, the benefits, um, you know, how many people it helped? I mean, is this one of the, the ways uh, people can be convinced to use such techniques that, you know, look, we've tried it in these countries and it's worked? Do you guys have a collection of these statistics of how beneficial it's been? That's right. So we do. But we, uh, we talked about target audiences before. So, you know, people like you and me don't get to decide whether our countries use nuclear technology. Okay. So that's a different target audience. You know, we have a target audience of decision makers, people in government who could say introduce or you know, the right legislation, uh, buy the right equipment, uh, ask for support from us or from, other, or from other sources and introduce nuclear power for different purposes. Or, sorry, nuclear technology for different purposes. That's a different way of communication than when we want to just make people better understand and appreciate what nuclear technologies can offer. To answer the second half of your question, uh, we we do have numbers. So let me give you an example from another area. Uh, For instance, uh, nuclear techniques can also be used to develop better crops. Uh, Basically, mutation in the world occurs through radiation from the sun, but it takes hundreds and thousands of years before a new variety of a plant is developed through, through this natural process. What you can do with irradiation is to speed up uh, this natural process and develop seeds in, in a few years. I mean, you know, between five and 10 years. And this is important for, partly for climate change adaptation. You know, as there's l- less rainwater, higher temperatures, more erratic rainfall, some of the, you know, the crop varieties can no longer cope and therefore it's going to improve them. So now this helps people, I mean, everybody by increasing food security, the food supply, but it particularly helps farmers whose livelihoods uh, can be improved if their yields increase, or if their yields even just stop decreasing uh, despite climate change effects. And there we we can and do demonstrate how many people, how many farmers are involved either in our projects or in follow-up projects by national governments or other donors uh, in in developing countries who pick up on the scientific results that we deliver and then propagate that further in the country. Okay. And Miklos, I also want to ask you about electricity uh, around the world. So... Uh, one thing you were also talking about at the Stratcom Summit is, you know, that a quarter of the world's electricity is actually generated from nuclear sources. Uh, so is this one thing that's just going to expand? The importance of nuclear uh, will only grow. Is this one thing you predict, project? J- just, just to clarify, it's one, over one quarter of low carbon energy that's nuclear. So it's 10% of the world's electricity mm-hmm. and one quarter of low carbon electricity. So you know, low carbon is on the rise. There are several countries that are expanding or introducing uh, the use of uh, nuclear power, you know, Turkey uh, being in the category of the introducing. There were two countries over the last 18 months who started to use nuclear power, uh, UAE and Belarus. There are other countries along with Turkey that are on the way. You know, Bangladesh uh, is another one that's relatively close to starting its first nuclear power plant. There are countries mostly in Asia uh, who are expanding uh, the use of nuclear power, uh, China, India. There are countries, you know, mostly in Europe, that are uh, withdrawing from nuclear, or at least not increasing the use of nuclear. So it's a mix. It's up to every country whether or not they want to use uh, nuclear power for, for electricity generation. But certainly, as our director general has, has repeatedly said, in order for the world to meet goals of the, of the Paris Agreement, nuclear must be part of the picture. Okay. And Miklos, I want to get back to this idea of social media. You were talking about how you've um, died has immensely started using it much, much more. Uh, is, is there a way to kind of, do you think, you know, some of the changes in the algorithms would help and optimize uh, to effectively reach a large audience? Do you think some of those changes are needed? You know, the algorithms are, are what they are. 
the, the, the social media networks are commercial providers. So they, you know, tweak their algorithms for their commercial interest, uh, which oftentimes means that they want corporate users to pay, right, advertise. So we've not done that. Our growth is organic growth. Therefore, our posts have to be popular with our current audience in order to be displayed, you know, to their audiences and for us to be able to continue growing our network. So that's sort of uh, what, what we're trying to do. It's not the eye's role or my role, you know, to talk about algorithms, criticize uh, algorithms. They are what they are, and that's the world we live in, and, and we have to adapt. And can you tell us about the content you produce? Is it all about nuclear? Um, so yes, we are. All our content is about nuclear, but not all of our content is about the IEA. Our role uh, as communicators for the IEA is broader than doing PR uh, for the organization. It is, as, as we discussed earlier, to promote the use and recognition uh, of nuclear as a force for good. Therefore, we go well beyond the IEA and oftentimes post, let's say, quizzes or you know interesting images about the use of nuclear in peaceful use of nuclear in many many different contexts. So I would say about two-thirds of our content would be IA-related, and about one-third would be general nuclear. And is one of your uh, methods of communication um, working with other organizations? Do you work with other organizations in trying to push out content? Uh, that's right. In my talk at the, at the Stratcom Summit, I focused on how you reach beyond the audience you already have. And so far in this uh, discussion, we've touched on two of the three pillars of this. One very briefly on search engine optimization. The other one was on social media optimized content. And the third one is to tap into the networks of others. That's because, you know, if I communicate only through my own network, well, then I'm going to reach my audience, but it's a lot more difficult to grow beyond that audience. If I have content that's interesting for a partner organization uh, or company or individual, an influencer to run, then I right away have access to the audience of that organization or, or an individual. And, you know, some of those people are bound to like what they read, find out, oh, nuclear is cool, and connect with us also and become part of our networks. So that's something that we use very often. An example I gave in my talk was with the FAO, the Agricultural Commission of the UN, uh, because uh, as I mentioned in, in my example on crop breeding, we work a lot with agriculture. And so there would be people who care about agriculture, care about food security, care about rural development, but don't know anything about nuclear. Well, if we can tap into the networks like FAOs that, that reach these people, then we can get in front of that bigger audience. And again, tell so many more people about the benefits of nuclear technology. Okay. And Miklos, you know, of course, one of the goals is to make sure that people around the world can see and understand clearly the potential of nuclear. When you look ahead, when you look forward, what do you think will be the most effective communication strategy, you know, going forward? Do you think it's going to be more and more social media use? Do you think there's going to be other methods that are going to get involved in this process? How do you project this going? What do you think will be the most effective way of reaching an audience and clearly giving them a message? So that is probably going to remain a mix, you know, a mix between social media, uh, search engine based communication, communicating via the press, and then also something we have not yet talked about is face to face. I mean, the most effective communication is face to face when you can sit down with your neighbor and explain to them that, you know, for, I mean, in my case, how useful nuclear techniques are. And so what we are looking for is that through our social media, we also get people who will be excited to talk about nuclear and carry it through in face-to-face -face communication with their friends or over at dinner party or, you know, on the bus on the way home from work. Okay. And do you think just with face-to-face, -face, do you think this is, of course, there's this idea that if a little cake shop opens somewhere in your city, uh, sometimes they would say, oh, it, you know, it's only popular because it spread word of mouth. Do you think this is still the case for many things? Yes, absolutely. I mean, people are most easily convinced by people who they know. And that is a very important way of communication. I mean, it's also not one that scales terribly well, right? And, and that's why in, in, my pre in my answer to your previous question, I talked about how we are working to, I mean, quote unquote, convert people who are, are social media users to become word of mouth advocates uh, for some of the content that they see through our platforms. Miklos, thank you so much. It was uh, an enlightening discussion for me to understand some of the techniques your organization uses. Thanks for joining the Stratcom podcast. Thank you very much for your interest, Omer.